There's a place in the woods called Aspen Ridge. This is where we call home. We're the Popple People. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for stopping by. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the Wiggy Antarctic Sleeping Bag, which is rated to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So I picked up this sleeping bag because we're in a part of the Midwestern United States that can see quite a bit of snow and winter storms. So this would be something to have along in your vehicle for like in case you get stranded in the car during a winter storm. We live in a pretty rural area and if you slide in the ditch or break down or end up stranded for any length of time, you could legitimately succumb to the elements. Better safe than sorry. Also, we've experienced winter power outages here before, and it's just nice to have this at home also, just in case. So a little bit about the sleeping bag. I paid 280 US dollars for it and it did ship for free at that price. I did not get the over bag, which you also have as an option to get this one down to negative 80 degree Fahrenheit temperature rating. I got the Antarctic sleeping bag only with the 118 inch full zipper. It came with some freebies. I got a pillow, a pair of sleeping socks, and my choice of stuff sack. You get to choose between the top down stuff sack, which is the one I got, or the radial, which cinches up like a bedroll. The insulation in this bag is called Lamalite, which the website says has a lifetime guarantee. So if you have any issues with insulation, like clumping or separating, or if there's any loss of loft or things like that, supposedly it's covered for life. According to the website, it says the size measures 36 by 92 inches. So it is quite a roomy bag. And it is a big bag, however, when we measured them here, we get slightly different measurements than that. It was just shy of 90 inches long, and width was approximately 33 inches. You definitely don't feel like a stuffed sausage in it. That's one of the reasons I don't care for the mummy style bags myself. I just feel too constricted, so I really like the extra room in this bag. Also, it weighs about eight and a half pounds, so it's a big, heavy sleeping bag. So if you're counting ounces, this one is a beast. I need to talk here for a minute about just my first impressions. When I opened the box, when I first pulled out the sleeping bag, I noticed some spots of the sticky, like, goo residue on the sleeping bag, and this was literally right out of the box, so it came that way. And I emailed a picture right away, and I was actually surprised that the president of Wiggies is the one who emailed me back, but he stated that he didn't know what it was and said it could not possibly have left the factory like that but it obviously did, so I wasn't really impressed with that response. He then advised me to rub some alcohol on the sticky areas, and it actually did remove the residue, but that knee-jerk response he gave me just rubbed me the wrong way, because it did leave the factory with that sticky goo on the sleeping bag. Oh well. So next, let's go through some pros and cons of this Wiggy Minus 60 sleeping bag. As far as pros go, this bag is plenty roomy. You definitely won't feel like a stuffed sausage like in some of the mummy bags. It is thick, warm, and fluffy. Definitely warm at zero-ish temperatures. Um, I'd feel confident that it would also be comfortable well below zero, too. Uh, the top hood is really nice. Um, this bag extends up over your head and face, so you're cocooned in there pretty well, and then you can cinch it up closed in that top hood area as well. It came with several freebies, um, the sleep socks and the pillow. I liked also having my choice of stuff sack style. There's also that lifetime guarantee. Now, I haven't needed to cash in on that, probably because I just got this, um, so who knows how they'll handle it in real life. But it does say on their website that things like if a seam opens up or if you have any insulation issues, clumping, separating, loss of loft, those types of things should be covered under that lifetime guarantee. Um, let us know in the comments if you've actually had any experience with cashing in on that guarantee uh, through Wiggy. I'm curious to know how it went and if you've dealt with them um, and like warranty issues or anything like that. Let us know. I want to do some winter camping and this bag will allow for comfort at much lower temperatures compared to other sleeping bags that we have, which are good for like what I'd say is a warm winter's night, maybe 20, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. This minus 60 bag will work even for sub-zero temperatures. 
Though we've had a relatively warm El Nino winter this year, there are some lower temperatures near zero in the forecast here, so I'm going to set this up and give this bag a try tonight. Now for the cons, my first one is the fact that my new sleeping bag came dirty with these sticky residue spots on it and the subsequent correspondence with customer service was less than pleasant. It left me unimpressed with the company overall. Next, uh, kind of both a pro and a con, it's a heavy bag. Um, I'm including it on the cons list only because at about eight and a half pounds, you're not going to want to be hauling this a really long distance. It's going to start to feel heavy pretty quick. This next one is also a matter of personal preference for me. You might not find it to be a con for this bag, but it was just a little too long for me. There's a lot of bag left past the end of my feet. I'm five foot eight, and there was literally several feet of excess at the bottom. Um, might not be a big deal for you, but I definitely noticed it, especially in the hammock. Um, quite a bit of this bag hung over the edge of my hammock while I was trying to sleep. Before I bought this sleeping bag, I checked out a lot of online reviews on the Wiggy website, and one thing that I noticed is they were all really good and positive. And after my debacle with the sticky spots, I actually left an online product testimonial of my own, and it turns out they screened their reviews. Mine never got posted, probably because I mentioned that residue issue and how it was handled. It seems to me like they only post the good reviews on their website, and that kind of rubs me the wrong way. It totally explains, though, why all the product testimonials you'll find on their website are raving about Wiggy sleeping bags. So take that with a grain of salt. And finally, the last thing I wanted to mention on cons is that the zipper only has a pull tab on the outside. It'd be nice to have one on the inside, too, when you're zipping up at night. It's about 10.30 p.m. right now, and let's do a quick temperature check here. She's chilly, almost zero Fahrenheit. All right, this will be a good night to give her a test. At about 1.30 a.m., we're hovering at around 3 degrees Fahrenheit. And by 4.30 a.m., it's about 2 degrees Fahrenheit, so right around that zero as predicted in the forecast. The good thing is there's no wind, so it's actually been a really pleasant night outside. Okay, so let's toss on these sleeping socks here. You'll see here that I'm not wearing any special gear, just regular sweatpants, no Under Armour or any other like base layers or anything like that. And just an old pair of socks that I knit myself, nothing spectacular, like my feet get cold in the house wearing these socks. All right, we're all set. Let's crawl in here. All right, getting in here, there is a lot of sleeping bag, tons of room. You're definitely not constricted. Um, I like that it wraps around your head and that you can cinch that up shut. There's a cord for that. My only real complaint so far is that the zipper here doesn't have a pull on the inside. The only pull tab is on the outside, so you have to reach out to get to that. So we are all tucked in here. And it is actually warmer than I thought it would be. So I am pleasantly surprised. So just to show you, I am not wearing any like special gear. I just have a regular sweatshirt on. No Under Armour or anything underneath. And this is surprisingly toasty in here. So by 6 a.m. it's about three degrees Fahrenheit. Bottom line on performance here. It's been surprisingly decent. I felt warm and comfortable in this bag all night, even at temperatures right around zero Fahrenheit. One last pro on this sleeping bag that I forgot to mention before, it is made in America, so I do like that. If you'd like to get a hold of us with questions or comments, please email us at thepopplepeople, all one word, at gmail.com, or you can plip plop a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. 
We really appreciate it. If you found this information helpful, give us a thumbs up below, and we'd sure appreciate it if you'd please consider subscribing. That way, you can be a Popple People too. We'll see you soon.